Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist, and back there is Cindy Oliver, and she's a dog. As a lot of you would know, several children have recently died in the UK from strep A infections. If you are a normal, decent person, you would be feeling for the families of these children right now. If instead you are an anti-vaxxer, you are probably attempting to capitalise on these tragedies by twisting them into an anti-vax message. And before I go on, a lot of people seem to be triggered by the term anti-vaxxer and think it is an unnecessary insult, which is a bit weird because it's just a descriptive term. I'm not insulted by people calling me a pro-vaxxer because it just describes my stance. But anyway, just to be clear, I use the term anti-vaxxer to refer to people who spread misinformation about vaccines. And if this is you, you deserve to be called an anti-vaxxer. If instead you are just quietly vaccine hesitant, but don't actually spread misinformation, I'm not talking about you. But back to the anti-vaxxers, let's look at a few of their claims. This is a tweet from Bev Turner, who is a presenter on GB News and was also recently involved in a Q&A evening with Dr. C. Malhotra and Dr. John Campbell. Is anyone looking into the coincidental timing of the hashtag strep A infections and the nasal flu vaccines in kids? Because this study below suggests a link. Now, I will shortly go over the study and explain why Ms. Turner really shouldn't share studies that she doesn't understand, but first I have to show you a Facebook post that almost makes Ms. Turner seem rational. Almost. This slide shows a screenshot of a Facebook post which has subsequently been shared by other people on Facebook. I'll just read them out to you. The original screenshot says, side effects of the flu mist nasal spray that they've been dishing out to kids. Guess what? Strep A. Keep that crap away from your kids. Schools clearly have no idea what they're allowing. And the person who shared the screenshot said, boom, now I know why my kids have both been ill. Scary face emoji. I never let them have that poison, by the way, because I am not stupid. But obviously it has come from the other kids whose parents haven't got a clue and again trusted the science, thus allowing their kids to be part of another live experiment. Explanation mark. Strept A slash streptococcus slash strep throat is bacterial, not viral, by the way. Hence why it is contagious. Say no to the flu spray, people. It's not what you are being told it is. Viruses are our body's way of detoxing. And without viruses, our bodies can't detox properly. Why allow something inside your kid's system that you know nothing about? People are just plain ignorant. As she said, people are just plain ignorant. And I don't think there's really any more to say about that post, although I guess it's worth mentioning that the vaccine she's talking about is the flu mist vaccine, which is an attenuated virus which has been developed so that it replicates in the nose, but not the lungs. Given how much she loves viruses, you would think she would want her children to get this one as well. But back to the original paper, which appears to have started all this nonsense. So this is the paper here. Its title is Live Attenuated Influenza Vaccine Enhances Colonization of Streptococcus Pneumoniae and Staphylococcus Aureus in Mice. And you don't need to read beyond the title to realize that this study provides no evidence whatsoever to support the claims being made. And the reason is neither of the two bacteria that they looked at in the study were strep A. Strep A is short for group A streptococcus, 
which is uh, beta hemolytic bacteria, the most common type of which is Streptococcus pyogenes. And beta hemolytic basically means that it destroys red blood cells. And if we go back to the paper, we can see that there is no mention of Streptococcus pyogenes because they didn't study it. And of course, the bacteria that they did study were studied in mice. And the vaccine that they studied was specifically adapted to mice. The other key word in the title is colonization. Colonization means that the bacteria grew and formed colonies. It doesn't necessarily mean that there was any detrimental effect of that bacterial growth. And the little white dots that you can see on these petri dishes are colonies of Staphylococcus aureus, in case you are wondering what bacterial colonies look like. They aren't from the paper, they're just from our lab. You don't typically show stuff like this in a paper because they're a bit messy. You just present the results which are related to the number of dots and what sections of the dish they are in. And that, that's because um, each section is sort of a different dilution of bacteria. So the ones that are more concentrated have more dots and the ones that are less concentrated will have less dots. And you calculate it all to work out how many colony forming units you have altogether. However, although the paper has no relevance at all to strep A, it does provide some data that supports vaccination, which is pretty funny given anti-vaxxers seem to think it supports their cause. What they did in this study is they inoculated mice either with the vaccine or a sublethal amount of influenza virus or PBS. And then seven days later, they inoculated them with pneumococcus, which is an abbreviation for streptococcus pneumoniae. And they looked at two different strains. And this chart shows what happened. And as you can see, most of the mice died who were originally inoculated with the wild type virus, but none of those inoculated with the vaccine did. So the paper is actually a bit of an own goal for anti-vaxxers. Now, if we quickly go back to Bev Turner's tweet, in addition to embarrassing herself by sharing a paper that doesn't support her claim, she also suggests there is coincidental timing of strep A infections and the nasal flu vaccine in kids. Only problem is, a quick look at the number of notifications for invasive strep A shows that the notifications started increasing before any flu vaccinations would have been given. And you can see this in the thick blue line representing 2021 to 2022, which started trending upwards early in the year. And the chart's a little bit confusing because it doesn't start at the beginning of the year, which is weird, but that's how they do it. They're basically showing it in seasons. Anyway, it's also clear looking at this figure that there is no correlation between the flu vaccine and the eye gas notifications in any of the years that are shown on the figure. And before any anti-vaxxers start getting excited and decide to blame it on the COVID vaccine, this table clearly shows that the increase is across all age groups, including those under five, who couldn't possibly have been vaccinated against COVID as the vaccine was only approved for this age group a few days ago. So if you see any anti-vaxxers claiming that the flu vaccine is causing strep A infections, please share this video with them. If you'd like to look further into the data I've presented, I've provided links in the video's description. And please remember, this video is about the science, but you shouldn't take it as medical advice. For that, you should speak to your medical practitioner. If you've got this far, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you, because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee or Cindy a treat. We really appreciate your support. We will be continuing to make more videos about the science in the future. 
So if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.